this is my cry speak to me jesus this is my cry speak to me jesus work on me Work on me, Lord, work on me. This is my cry. Speak to me, Jesus. This is my cry. Speak to me, Jesus. Work on me. Work on me. family it's your boy james bougie you already know what it is i'm back with another video back with another podcast on the keep it bougie podcast today i got my brother drexel i am super excited for this young man um i actually met him um from my godfather's church um super excited about jesus this boy is fired up i'm talking about fired up so we had to you know get him on a podcast just so he could promote himself um so y'all could really get to know um, a good man, a guy, and a, um, like I said, we young, you know what I mean? So I try to stick with the youth as much as possible. So real quick, just give them a, a quick introduction of yourself and what church you attend. Well, as he said, my name is Drexel Everett. Um, I'm 19 years old, born and raised in Rochester, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually attend, well, we both got the same godfather. Right. But um, I attend Greater Works Deliverance Center, which is located on 2089 Joseph Avenue. So if you're in Rochester area, come out and support. Come for on. sure, for sure. So um, we're going to get right into it. You know what I'm saying? We got the questions. He's going to get the answers. And we all set. So. The first one is just giving them a quick background on how church was introduced to you, like what age and, and how you got to to the point where, where you at. Now, I'm not going to tell them the point that you at. I want you to let them know what point you at. OK, well, um, actually, um, so I was adopted right now. I'm adopted and I was adopted at three days old. And my father, my adopted father is a pastor. Um, his name is Pastor Everett. And since then. Um, I've been with him, been with the family. So that's how really I was introduced in church. Like the day I came home to be with my adopted family, I was in church that same day. So like literally church has been all my life. And so um, I know that that was of God because the way that he orchestrated everything Mm -hmm. to where I am now, it was just miraculous. But um, fast forwarding a little bit um, now where I am, I'm not gonna lie, I've been doing a lot, going mm-hmm. through a lot, but I would say I'm in a better space right now because I know like the seriousness of what it is to like follow God and to know that he has a plan for you mm-hmm. and to do everything to get to that plan. So right now um, on January 8th, actually, I finally accepted the calling for ministry on my life mm-hmm. and I have started my training, my track to become a minister. So right now I'm a minister in training. A hundred percent. And that is dope. If y'all didn't hear him, the man is 19 years old. You feel me? Eyes open and understand. You know what I'm saying? Like we always say, uh, you know, he understand the objective. He understand and he is making it happen for himself. Um, So real quick, just talk about your different church experiences. Like clearly this is the what you feel is the church home for you. So. How, like, what type of church experiences did you go through to realize that this is the one for you? Um, so going back to my father's church, I've been with my father's church for 18 years, literally, um, my whole life pretty much. Mm -hmm. And, um, I would say I've gotten a good basis or foundation because he's very old school. So like, I've learned a lot from him, but there was just to a point and my parents understood it was no nothing against their ministry, nothing against them. It was just, I needed to be somewhere else to grow, Mm -hmm. like, and do what I needed to do. And so when I um, told my parents, I waited till I was 18 because um, 
that was just like the respectable thing to do. And so I asked my parents if I could attend um, Pastor Alexander's church. We were at the former ministry, True Light, at the time, mm -hmm. because I saw that there was room where I could grow there exponentially. And seeing that, and like there was like youth there, a lot of youth there who was like on fire for God, and that's what really attracted me to go to his church. Right. And so I would say that was one of the best decisions I really made because I'm starting to see, well, I've been seeing clearly the fruit of my decision. Right, 100%. So, and I can, I can back them up on that. Uh, I have, everybody know my home church where I was raised, Holy Light Church of God, very, very old school. Um, where my grandmother, Mary Clark, is the pastor there, and my father, Jermaine Clark, is the youth pastor there. So um, I know what he means by it's no disrespect to the ministry. It's just old school and new school. It's a, it's a different type of energy. And, you know, at the end of the day, we all got the same. Old school have the same as new school, and the whole objective is just to be closer to God. Right. But there's not every church you, could, you can develop yourself to get there, you know, you got to surround yourself around the right people, around the right energy. So I definitely get it. And that was one thing for me, why I started attention, uh, attending my Godfather's church is because the youth, that was like the attraction there, like the youth, you know, is, is one thing where, you know, you're in church and you're around a bunch of uh, elderly people and who have their set rules on certain things. And then it's another thing when it's a whole bunch of you, around you know and by you i mean the youth that's active and fired up about you know building themselves and getting closer to god so i definitely feel him on that one so this i'm it, this next part i'm really excited to talk about because y'all know me y'all know how i get in that studio my boy got a song dropping or what 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 is that about talk to us a little bit on what made you do that like i didn't even i didn't even know that that was just style you feel me so what made you say yo and you wrote it, right, yourself? I did. It wasn't ghostwritten. So what made you sit down and was like, yo, I, I want to write a song and record it? Like, well, actually, I wrote this song in 2019. Oh, snap. So it's been it's been a minute since I've had I have a couple of songs. But um, honestly, last year was the push. I was like, um, God was telling me, like, I needed to record it. Mm -hmm. But so I wrote it in 2019 because 2019 was a rough rough year um, I went through a lot of depression a lot of other things like mental illnesses mm -hmm. um, a lot of like suicidal things just a lot of stuff but what I didn't realize was 2019 even though it was perceived to be like my worst year it produced like my best work because I produced like mm -hmm. a lot of things like messages um, I spoke on New Year's um, prepare for purpose that was written in 2019 this song's coming out on January 29 tomorrow um 2019 and so basically um like the starting words the starting song the words are i see your pain i see your hurting i see your tears stuff like that and that was pretty much god talking to me saying like i see you're hurting but then the chorus comes and it says just know this is your time this is your season and mm -hmm. this is your breakthrough so just have faith everything will be all right Facts. and so what I didn't realize was even at the time I was writing it, I didn't believe it, but it was years coming that I started to see the fruit. Like, this is my time. Right. Like, I can, I was, I can yeah. say that clearly. Like, this is my time for real. So what I feared, I guess, I wasn't, like, qualified enough. I didn't have the good vocals to sing it. But mm -hmm. I realized, like, when God gives you something, it's going to work out. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And so did you have any... What was the push that, because you said you, it's, for y'all that don't know, if y'all just not tuned into your own life, it's 2023 now. So 2019, that's like four years ago. Right. So what was that push that you said, okay, I did this in 2019. What was that push to say, go record this? Um, it was actually my cousin. Um, she's the actual pastor now of my father's church. Okay. So I play for them in the mornings before I come to our services, of course. Yeah. And so she was like, Drexel, um, I need you to record a song. And I was like, it's funny you say that because I got all these songs. Right. But the thing is, like, I didn't know who to connect with. I didn't know if it was the time. And she was like, we're going to record a song before the year ends. And that's what we did. And so um, the dope. original um, plan was to release it before the new year came in. But, you know, God had other plans. And that's all right. Right. But um, she was like the one who really pushed me out. Um, connected me with um, a producer and the one thing that I'm very thankful for 
if she didn't charge me a dime, she paid for it everything That's and dope. so um she most definitely is the reason why the song is coming out right the way it is so shout out to you because i'm excited i seen the snippet and i'm like is my boy dropping the song you feel me so shout out to you i'm definitely excited because that's dope like everybody know music is that's like my love language in life you feel me like mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. music you feel me everybody know i always say this um and it's, it's no matter what type of music I'm making, whether it's gospel, whether it's R&B, whether it's rap, I always say, people say, why do you make so much music? Like, I literally have like 130 songs unreleased, no cap. Mm, like, I, I record know. so much. And the reason that I tell people, the reason why I court, record so much is to say, I always say, I talk to the mic because the mic don't talk back. So that's it's good. it's just that's my good. way of expressing myself, that's you know. Good. So I'm here to tell y'all, anybody that's looking into making music, whatever, just go do it. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, for a minute he felt like he didn't have the vocal ability. Just go do it. You know what cool. I'm saying? It's like that's your release. And the more you do it, it's like anything. The more you do it, the better at it you get. I was always able. I've been singing since I was four years old. Everybody know that. Same. I've been singing since I was four. But when I first was getting in the studio, I couldn't catch a studio sound. Like, it's mm-hmm. different from when you're singing in church and you just letting God do whatever. Right. If it sounds good, if it do, if it don't, it don't. It's the power behind it. That's so right. that's what I had. I just had the power behind it. I just, But I didn't know how to structure myself for the studio. So go do it. Yeah, that's what the, he said was good. Um, what he said was um, just do it, basically, because, like, no one's going to connect with your lyrics as much as it's coming from like the main source Mm -hmm. like and i was thinking about selling my song you know giving it away but then i was like Mm -hmm. it's not gonna be the same because they didn't experience right what i experienced like the words wouldn't be the same so yeah most definitely if you write your own lyrics yeah and i think it's a song or something that say that like you can't tell my story like right you feel me all my all my music i'm i'm telling stories you know i'm a storyteller so i could 100 percent ghost write something for somebody else and they could sing it, and then if I go and sing it, it's going to so much different, especially when people know you. So when right. people hear this song, if they personally know him and they know what he went through, it's going to hit different. And that's what attract the listeners right there. Um, so also, let me see. So just tell us a little bit. What's your future plans for your ministry? Like, Do you, f- do you feel like you're just going to be a youth minister here? Do you feel like eventually you're going to branch off? Like, What, what are you looking to get out of this as far as going to be like, you know what I'm saying, in the ministry mm-hmm. world? Well, um, I was actually praying about it a lot because I knew God wanted me in ministry. I didn't mm-hmm. know what it, what it was gonna be, but um, he showed me like me speaking. So, but I was always at a different church, not saying like I'm church hopping, but it was more of a like evangelistic anointing, more of a evangelistic ministry. And so, I was praying about it. I was like, God, is this, is this like the direction that you're sending me in? Right. And it's just like, he's been like confirming it more and more, like a lot. So I feel like the main goal, not the main goal, but one of the main things that I know that I'll be doing for sure is like evangelizing, going to different countries or states whatever god has but it's most definitely something along the lines of like evangelism i don't know about like pastoring because yeah. people know how i feel about being a pastor and stuff but if that is god's will later on in the future then so be it but i most definitely know that he wants me to do something along the lines of like evangelism okay so just go ahead and take some some time to give the youth or or whoever all the listeners just give them some inspiring words you know what i'm saying uh let them know what it is, you know what I mean? Because it's, like I said, it's one thing where you, you know, for yourself, for us being young, when we go to churches and you hear the older people telling you, oh, young man, you got this and this, and it's a calling on your life and all that. And it's like, yeah, it sound good and da, da, da. But it's different when it's coming from your own people. Like, you know what I'm saying? We youth, we got to stay together. So go ahead and talk to the youth a little bit and just, just give them some, some eye openers, you know what yeah. I mean? I know one thing that I tell myself all the time, um, Mm -hmm. don't let no one run you out of church. There it is. Don't let no one drive you out of church. Because I'm not talking about everybody, but we do have a lot of judgmental 
people in the church. 100%. And so what I tell myself, like if I see myself judging someone like in my mind or just like vocally, I'll be like, if I really had the time to think about everything going wrong in my life and everything I'm doing, I really wouldn't have the time to judge somebody else about mm -hmm. what they're in or what situation they're in. So most definitely um, keep pushing because no one really knows your story besides you. So don't let no one drive you out of church. Don't let no one like gain victory over your losses. 100%. 100%. So I would say, even though right now you might not be in a good situation or whatever the case may be, um, your connection with God, your relationship with God is for you and God. No one can determine whether you have a real or fake relationship with God. Right. And so, like me, like I have tattoos. I have a tattoo right here. That's the only one I got. And so that was one of the things. Cause I know a lot of people were talking about it, and they're like, "Um, you're supposed to be like a man of God." I had this back in like February 2021. I got this, but it really made me want to like leave. I was like, yeah. "Y'all really gonna be talking about me like that?" Yeah. 100%. But the thing is, like, even though yeah, I got a tattoo, my connection with God is still. I'm all out. You know, everybody know me. Like I'm yeah. sold out for God. So, <laughs> no, 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 so for, like, don't let no one demean you, like yeah. undermine you. Your connection with God should be for you and God. And so I feel like the fruit, like me, is evident. So yeah, just don't let no, don't let nobody judge you to make you run out of church. That's a fact. That's that's like really like work, like. And when me and Alexander was talking, we were, we were pretty much saying how we were talking about titles and how people take their title at their job more serious than they do at church. It's the same mm -hmm. thing with him saying pretty much letting somebody run you out of the church because you letting somebody run you away from your blessing. You're not going to be at work and just let somebody run you away and you quit your job. Like, you're not going to do that because at the end of the day, the goal is to make that money. You know what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. goal at church is to get that, that blessing, get what you need to get closer to God. So... Don't do that. Another thing that I like what he said is um, if he was thinking more so about what he got going on, you feel me? He won't have time to think about. And it's a saying that that uh, my dad used to always say when I was younger is sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Right. We got to take that into consideration and do it ourselves. Like if we focus on us and I think Alexander actually preached about this like a, a little while ago. He was talking about how so many people. You know, have they have so much time when they're in church to say, oh, did you see what this person was wearing at church? Or you see mm -hmm. the objective <laughs> is to go to church and get closer to God, to focus on the word, to focus on the ministry and song and things like that. Why are we focusing on why the lady had a red hat on with blue shoes and right. a pink shirt? Right. You know what I mean? Like if you have time to really break people outfits down and what people doing in church, you're not there for the right reasons. You're, you're not, not you're not really locked in. And you just got to self-reflect and realize like, oh, yeah, I'm messing up. You feel me? I'm not right. And going back to one of the other topics that he actually said, and it, I don't know why it's just not registering. I think that's just how my brain moved. But he said something that was powerful. He said the year to, that seemed to be his worst, he got his best work out of. Mm -hmm. Literally, that is my life. Like I last year, 2022, I'm tripping. I said 2020, 2022. Probably was my worst life that I experienced. Like y'all that know my story, y'all know my story. Like I lost out on the the biggest person of my life. I lost out on that. But musically, that junk drove me to the next level. I became I, I got my best work out of there. It's actually um matter of fact, right after that happened, I think um that's when y'all had the revival when that lady came here. Mm, mm -hmm, yeah. Listen. When I tell you, I was, and that was my, like my first time really being in church for a while. Like, so something that seems to be so wrong, like I felt like the year was over with, it drove me. It was just, it was all perfect time in the weirdest way. It's like that tragedy happened and then boom, I see a flyer like, oh, this dynamic speaker. And I'm like, I seen her when she came here mm -hmm. in, at True Light. Oh my God. And I missed it because I was in the army. So it just, God does stuff in the weirdest ways. And I was talking to Alexander on the phone maybe a few days ago, just venting to him about some stuff that I was going through personally. And he was just like, and I'm like, yo, I got to get back in the church. You feel me? I got to start visiting more. I was coming up with all these excuses on why I couldn't be in the church and what I had going on. And then he started limiting it. God started taking that stuff away in a crazy way. It wasn't just like he just took them away. It's like, okay, 
Now the people that I was spending my time with, my Sundays with, now me and them got problems. So, you know, he, he mm -hmm. do stuff in the craziest ways and, and we can't always think negative like, oh, you know, well, if God was so real, why would he allow us to do that? Now right. we can't think like that. It's like, oh, this stuff is happening. This is my door. You feel me? So definitely this man, a guy right here is inspiring to me and he younger than me. You feel me? He got about, let me see. Six six years, we like six years different, and I really look up to him when it come down to this ministry stuff because I see him when I'm in church, and I'm like, yo, this dude is doing it, and it remind me of the younger me. Like I said, y'all know my upbringing to maybe about sixteen, I was that fired up human. I'm talking about going to school in suits, and I'm like giving okay. people the word in school in high school. You feel me? So y'all knew who I was. They used to call me the church boy, like literally, I was church boy, church boy, church boy. And then I started hanging around the wrong people, started doing mm -hmm. the wrong stuff, and it just slowly tore me apart. So this man right here is really the eye opener that it's never too late. No matter what you go mm -hmm. through, you can still get locked in. So y'all definitely got to come out to this church. I'm telling you, it's dynamic. I would not steer y'all wrong. You feel me? I'm not just saying that because it's my Godfather's church. If it was any other church, I'm telling you, I'm going to keep it a thousand. And this church, I'm telling you, good energy. It's mixed with, oh, yeah. you got some old souls in here, but mainly the newer style. But he has the the older school principles, like the knowledge mm -hmm. and the training, like, and with just like a newer school flow to keep you engaged, you know. And, and also, like he said, um, I know y'all seen the uh, the podcast that I did with Pastor Alexander, is they have the, the live too. So if you guys can't make it out, you know, just tune in. So. Definitely, y'all stay tuned, man. Um, let them know where they could get your song from because it's dropping tomorrow. Yeah. So let them know where they so can find that. Out. It should be on Apple Music, okay. Um, Spotify, YouTube Music, you know the main platforms. Um, yeah. I'm even gonna put it on SoundCloud. I don't even use SoundCloud. Facts. But I'm putting it on <laughs> everything. So like, yeah. yeah. So ain't no excuse. For real. So, <laughs> y'all better go out and get it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no excuse. Go on and get it. I'm definitely tuned in as soon as it drops. Boom, I'm clicking the link because I got album music. So I'm definitely going to be tuning in. Like I said, I'm fired up to hear this. Um, and, and it's going up. So I want y'all to come out. And Do you have anything going on? Like, are you speaking anytime soon or anything that they should be? Or are you not, you're not really sure? Um, mm, well, speaking, no. But I will be having, like, a release celebration type concert thing happening mm -hmm. in February. More details will come about that. But um, okay. we're going to have, like, singers. I'll sing the song live yeah. um, with... Um, Hillary, who's also on the feature, and so I'll put out a flyer and stuff, share it around, but that's basically like the main thing that's coming up. Um, if there are speaking engagements, I most definitely keep y'all updated. Fact. So make sure y'all stay in tuned in, because definitely when that drop, I'm gonna throw that on the YouTube channel uh, with this this release uh, situation, because I'm hyped. Y'all don't understand, like, when I see youth, like, especially the real youth, I'm not talking about mm -hmm. this fake stuff that's going on. When right. I see the real, I'm I'm 100% locked in with support. Like, y'all know how I am about support. I support everybody, but when it's something serious, I'm locked in. So, once he dropped that, y'all gonna be, uh, y'all gonna be locked in. Also, I have a song that I just recorded, like, maybe two, three days ago. Yeah. You feel me? And yeah. that's actually, if y'all didn't already see the podcast with me and um, Pastor Alexander, the intro song that I use for that, that's the new song, is called Lift Me Up. Um, so y'all just stay tuned. We're doing big things around here. Um, we staying engaged. I'm definitely going to get locked back in and, and, you know, go back to what I'm called to do is just, like I said, when you hang around the, the wrong people, I'm a true believer that you are who you hang around. So that's so when, you, when you bring in the wrong people into your life and allowing the wrong people to stick around too long, that's it a takes a toll on your body. That's you know what I'm saying? Fact. Especially when you gain a love for these people. And it's just like, dang, I don't want to just kick them to the curb. Now you putting your blessings to the side to right. just to keep them around. And we, you know what I'm saying? So I'm starting to get that understanding and, and I know what it is. So it's crazy yeah. you said that because I actually spoke about that. It was, a, it was like a little just slipping, but mm -hmm. I spoke about that um, on New Year's when I, when I um, preached. And I said, well, I worded it, your associations are often a preview of where you're Headed. Mm -hmm. And so just like he said, um, hanging around like bad influences or like negative influences, that's often like you pick up those same habits and those same things. So I will most definitely say um, watch your circle, watch mm -hmm. who you hang around, because as I said, your associations are often a preview of your destination where you're going to head. So 
Yeah. I like that. Most definitely That's watch fire. your circle. Most That's definitely watch your circle. Yeah. So, hey, I appreciate you. Um, and, and it's time we're going to do, uh, I'm going to let you do a quick prayer for them. Okay. And then um, I'm going to do my outro and then we're going to head out of here. So, right. thank y'all for tuning in. All right, so Father, um, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for bringing us here to do this podcast, Lord. I pray that somebody is encouraged mm -hmm. um, by our words, by our discussion. Um, I pray that with my song releasing soon, that it will touch and pierce people's hearts, Lord. Save lost souls, Lord. Do the work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, I pray that you will just keep us and let us grow even the more, Lord. People watching, let them grow even the more. Lord, and we just pray that you will just send revival in our city and our nation, Lord. And we just thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to this video. Um, go ahead and click the notification bell so you can get every single notification as soon as I drop videos. And also hit the notification bell because, like I said, when my boy dropped what he got going on, I want y'all to be tuned in. So, thank y'all for watching. Catch y'all in the next video. Just have faith, everything will be alright. Oh, and your season will.